Hi, this is uh, Mitch Thomas with Sound Toys. Welcome to our booth, all of you. Uh, <laughs> it's 2011 and we're here with Mark Needham, Mr. Mix Everything on the Planet. <laughs> Hi, Mitch. Hi, how are you doing? Good. So, so uh, how many records did you say you're, you're mixing on average a year? Uh, 35 to 50, usually. You know? 30, 30, that's a lot, if, in case you don't know. Uh, but uh, so, what, what, some of the highlights from this year, the cool stuff that you've done? Uh, the neon trees, I think it's just, well, we're still number one right now, so it's yeah. doing great. Uh, Very cool. Did a new Blondie record that I thought came out really good. Uh, I have a band, These Kids Wear Crowns on EMI Canada, I just finished it. I'm really happy with I think that's going to be a really big album this year. Um, right. Uh, who else? Uh, God, there's so many bands. Yeah. So, I to remember them all. so over time, what what's got to be your some of your top favorites that you've done? Because you've done hundreds of mixes. Uh, Fleetwood Mac. You know, it's, a, it's always a, just fun to work with with a band that that's that that talented. Uh, right. The Killers has been great. Uh, Killers. It's, you know, it's been a great career boost for me. Uh, Chris Isaac. Uh, and you said you work on new Chris Isaac? Starting a new Gladys Chris Isaac uh, Saturday. We're flying to Memphis and starting okay. a new record. But. Oh, cool. I, I hope that wasn't a secret. We just no, told the whole no, no, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, okay, cool. And uh, obviously the most important thing, you use sound toys on these mixes? I use sound toys on pretty much every mix I do. Yeah. You know, I, I, I use a lot of Ecto Boy. I've been using Decap Decapitator a lot. Right. I mean, I, I use everything, and you know, the mix I was working on this morning, we probably had 15 or 20 echo, various echo, or sound toys plugins running, you know. Right. Right, and when you use any, uh, Mark sent us some cool mixes, and uh, was it the artist is Ray? Is that? I have a girl, I have a production company as well, and I sent you a band called Divide Today. Right. And a, and a pop artist named Ray. Yeah. And the, another Ray track that you sent me was Thims, but it still had like eight. Sound Toys plug in. I, I was simulating some of what I'd done for pre the stems basically, so I just pulled the stuff off the stems and then just tried to just recreate what I was what I'm doing in multiple, multiple tracks. I mean, most of those sessions are 160, 180 tracks, so they'd be hard to bring down to your laptop. But. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want that. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a stretch. So I'm using the decapitator a lot, yeah. on, uh, especially this last week. I have several mixes that were running a lot of that for drum loops just to get things more aggressive. You right. Know? Cool. Um, been using it on bass a lot for a little more aggressive sound. Um, I, you know, I have I use filter freak a lot. I use you know, I use pretty much everything you have quite a bit. Now, are you using them uh, like special effects? Are you using them as a mix tools to you know sweeten things up? What what the? Well, uh, Echo Boy. I mean, I usually run Echo Boy in varying amounts, going from first bridge to chorus on vocals, so that. I'm always changing the atmosphere of things coming from the chorus to the pre-chorus to keep things getting bigger, expanding into a chorus. Uh, I also do a lot of special effects stuff with 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 the Filter Freak and, and and Echo Boy as well. But I mean, I use them as general mix tools as well, just to keep keep things always changing and expanding to a tune. You know. Right. I noticed on Let It Roll, the, the rock tune that you sent to us, you had a, some cool breakdowns with some special effects with filter breaks. You know, that, that, that's kind of a red state rock band, which I don't usually do as much of that stuff on, but um, we're kind of trying to use like the, the filter break stuff to get some some subtle sweep in the stuff of the chorus. So right. it doesn't, I'm not trying to get too electronic dance sounding, but yeah, we actually we just got that song in the Super Bowl. Yeah, it was a great song, and it was, you know, it was a nice build-up too. It wasn't too over the top, you know, dance floor. I'm, so. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited about our our, our, our Super Bowl thing with it this year. Great, you know, yeah, like, awesome. Yeah, so they're they're doing the big. Well, they're they're, they're, they're using that too in the Super Bowl this year. So, uh, nice. Yeah, I'm excited. I want tickets. You know. Oh, you got tickets too. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. <laughs> um, I you know I've been using decap. Yesterday I was using decapitator a lot in uh, in four drum loops. Just kind of you know, that, uh, that, that I had stacked it good, good, starting from a first verse to a pre chorus where the actual live drums hit on the chorus. And we're you, 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 just cutting that up in different bars and, 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 and using the, the decapitator to really get things more aggressive as we, as we you know, what, what halfway through the verse and coming into the pre chorus and then to come into the chorus. It, it, I mean, it really adds a nice aggressive sound. And with the, with the high filter cut, it's nice to. To get things more aggressive without getting too gritty in the top end. Um, I was also using it this morning to. I have a bass that's really subby that, that really needs just more of a 
rock mid-range tone cut cutting through and you know I was I, I tried several things on it uh, I, you know some amp simulators and some of the decapitators the thing that, 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 that really worked the best on it just, just trying to get that mid-range growl to get something to cut through you know because it's a busy track and as you did that on, on let it roll like with the bass you actually kind of they pulled it out into the mix a little bit so. yeah uh, uh, there's a there's a rock track that they have as a demo here that i'm using it on it just, just adds a nice little aggressive mid-range you know that that i wasn't able to get with, with, with some amp simulator and it, it seems to be working the best for me yeah, we, using decapitator we, on guitars. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just we, they were they were recorded so soft and there's no guts at all, and it, it, it really made a big difference. Is what you know. I've like been going back and forth with this producer in the band in Japan since about five o'clock this morning. I was up really early working. You know, did, we're uh, s s streaming a mix in Japan, and you know, try trying different things to get these guitars to get aggressive enough because they didn't record them right. So, but but the, the decapitator really seemed to do the trick. So. Yeah, and that's a good question. So, are you using it on, on decapitator on vocals too, or? I I do use it on vocals sometimes. I mean, it's I, I mean I have several different things that I'll use for distortion on vocals, but that that definitely would be, be one. Yeah. I use that. I'll use the maybe doing low the low low filter, high filter cuts on that to get a nice aggressive mid range yeah. vocal. Where I was using it on some slapbacks today, where I'm actually just. I'm actually creating a delay rather than rather than using a delay. I'm actually just just, just you know duplicating a track, moving stuff, and then and then I'm time stretching the track. So it's so it's not quite a delay. It's like a little the delay actually comes out a little longer on the tails and stuff. And I was using decapitator on, on that to get out of a low five, low mid, you know low high cut and just do. Yeah, he did some cool stuff on the, the demo that you sent us. You uh, had Echo Boy on a track for a long delay with Tremolator behind it right, to right. kind of pulse the echo as it was because it was a long feedback on the echo. It was very cool. Yeah, I was actually doing that on a track a couple weeks ago where I would have the, the uh, with some long slap delays that went out on a real sustained vocal, and then and then actually just automating the trim, the, the, the Tremolator out. So, yeah. so it starts to go into a Tremolator and then the stereo fan going back and forth. Which is, yeah. Well, I just, I just, especially on long sustain things like that, I like to, you know, I'm just trying to keep interesting stereo information going, and yeah, you know, just trying to keep those little ear candy headphone, headphone kit stuff going, you know. Right. Yeah, and that's, you know, the power. It, it's very cool combining the plugins together. I mean, some of them are big on their own, but putting them together. Yeah, I, I mean, I do multiple stacks of this stuff a lot, where I, and, and I might have, I might have two or three tribulators doing. You know, they're, they're working together to do different things. Right. And I also noticed you used uh, Crystallizer to, as a kind of an alternate. It wasn't just, it was kind of a straightforward delay, but in the reverse mode, it gave you a little different flavor. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, use, I use that a lot to, to create, like, kind of fake pad stuff. Right. I've, I've been using it a lot. I, you know, I, I, go through, I go through my phases when I'm happy with this, you know, this month. Or, you know, but this last month, I've been using it a lot to create kind of pad echoes off of vocals or guitars we'll get just kind of a little simulated pad that washes in for you know a, for, for maybe for a brief moment behind the verse or something but right. you know I, I change it up all the time i get bored and switch over you know switch to some other well you're a lucky man because you get to work with all these different bands all kinds of material i am a lucky guy yeah like, very you know, you know i mean I, I i don't do things the same same way twice that many times but <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'd love to just start stacking stuff together and experience. I like to just come up with, with, with effects that, that don't just do a straight quarter note delay, but if I can have something that maybe starts that way, but then spreads off into a, some weird alternating stereo thing. It, it just something, those little tricky things on the trails that, that you know, I mean, they, 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 the kids with earbuds, you know, they love that tune. Well, and the, the Ray tune is a really great tune, I gotta say. When's that coming out? Um, that's you, right? That's your thing. That's uh, my production company. We actually we did that. We're, we have that coming out in a movie. It's just that was, that's kind of done for a movie right now, and it's still mm -hmm. sort of an album in progress. But cool. um, great so track. We're, we're just getting some, you know, just keep getting it out there and some various various licensing things just to build up the build up the, the web presence, as it were. All right, cool. Well, the uh, I mean, obviously, we're we're glad to have you come by and chat with us. We appreciate you spending some time with us.